Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the Sit Down. We got a legend in the building. Jose Feliciano is here with us. What's going on, man? Well, uh, a lot is going on. Uh, I would like to say, and I mean this very humbly, uh, I'm not a legend. And the reason I'm not a legend is because I haven't died of an overdose yet. You still got time. Uh, yeah. You still got more music to make. No, I do. I do. And um, I'm very privileged. Uh, my album, I think, is one of the best albums that I've done in a bunch of years. Uh, my Why do you last, feel that way? Yeah, my last album was an album entitled The King, where I did uh, uh, an album devoted to Elvis's music. Uh, I produced it, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, then Helen and I, Helen Murphy, mm -hmm. who at the time was running Ole uh, Records, changed the name, and now it's called Anthem. And I think Anthem is more than just a boutique label. Uh, because when you have a dynamo like Helen Murphy, mm -hmm on your team, you'd better be prepared to work. Because if you're not, if you're not gonna succeed, stay the hell away, you know? <laughs> and I wanna succeed and we make, we have a great friendship. I love her to death and I think she's very, very special. I like it, so what was the biggest challenge of this new album? Well, I think the biggest challenge was the material and recording in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, First time I, for you, right? Yes. Yes, I've done concerts in Nashville, mm -hmm. but I never, uh, I never recorded in Nashville. And I can see why people enjoy recording there because the musicians have uh, good vibrations. And, uh, and it was a thrill for me. I like it. I'm sure it was. You got yeah. back together with the old producer, right, and Rick? I did. Rick and I got back together, and I keep saying this, but for me, uh, Rick Gerard is like being with George Martin mm. of the Beatles. His instincts are great. He knows what material to choose. He's the one that made me do. I say made me do because I was performing a version of Light My Fire, and when I would play the Golden Bear mm -hmm. in Huntington Beach, California, I, you know, like I, um, I was doing Light My Fire because I was a big fan of The Doors. I was a fan of Robbie Krieger. Mm -hmm. I never met Jim Morrison, so but I liked, I liked the way he thought. I liked his poetry. So music has taken you all over the world. Take me back to the beginning. When did you realize you had the goods? And like when I hear you sing and play, it's a, it's a deeply emotional experience. When did you tap into that? Well, I tapped into that when I was just a little boy in school, in elementary school. This is in Puerto Rico at the time or no, here in New York? In, no, in New York. Okay. I came, uh, from Puerto Rico in 1950. Mm -hmm. I was part of the Puerto Rican migration to the United States. Now, uh, the United States, uh, some Puerto Rican nationals tried to kill President Truman. Mm -hmm. And um, luckily for them, for us, they weren't successful because the man from Missouri was, I think, a very great president. Uh, he didn't really have time to uh, warm up to the presidency because he was Roosevelt's vice president. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's the guy that, like for example, someday, I don't know, I don't know how I would do it, but I would like to be like a Dave Patterson who ran for governor okay. and was successful. And uh, 
I would be governor of somewhere so that I could help the blind. Mm. Uh, I think the blind technology is really needed, like, um, like for example, um, uh, my son, God bless him, uh, programmed my iPhone. He was working at Apple, and he programmed my iPhone so that I could use it. Because I thought to myself, hey, Stevie Wonder is not the only one that's, that's right. going to learn to use uh, the iPhone. Did you hear what happened to um, Stevie Wonder? No. Somebody gave him a, a cheese grater for Christmas, <laughs> okay. and he said it was the most violent book he ever read. <laughs> Oh, man, you've always had a good sense of humor, which I like. Imagine. I always say, well, when you're blind, you'd better have a sense of humor because a lot of times you need to laugh. I mean, I'll go into a restaurant and a waitress will say to me, uh, would you like to see a menu? When she doesn't, she doesn't know who I am. Mm -hmm. And she'll say, would you like to see a menu? And I said, uh, lady... I'd like to see anything. <laughs> You're a good sport about it. Yeah, I am, because you have to be. If you want to function in a sighted society, they have to adopt you. It isn't the other way around.